We are glad that you are with us. Um, we're in a series of messages on Sunday mornings called Infinitely More. And they're centered on the scripture passage in Ephesians 3:14 through 21. And I thought I would uh, continue in that um, topic this evening with a message I've entitled Infinite Truth. And through the messages that we've been hearing on Sundays, uh, we're learning how God is glorified, how he's glorified in and through our lives. This past Sunday, Pastor Corey preached an excellent message showing how God is glorified when we make him our first priority and choose to love him with our whole hearts, even in the little things, even in the little details of life. Pastor Corey also stated that if we love someone, we want to spend time with them. Let that sink in, because that really arrested me when he said that. And obviously, you probably think of your spouse, I thought of my wife, but if we really love God, we ought to want to spend time with him. See, if we say we love God, but we don't choose to make time for him, then what does that say about how much we love him? But it's not only an expression of our love for God that we choose to spend time with him. It's through praying and reading the Bible that we want to know God more. See, to know God is to know truth. God is infinite, and God's word, the Bible, is infinite truth. The title of my message, as I mentioned, is Infinite Truth. And before we get into the notes, I want to give you three takeaways. There is truth. All right, there is absolute truth. I mean, we live in a world of ambiguities, fake news, opinions galore. But first and foremost, there is truth. Secondly, the Word of God is truth. And thirdly, the Bible is the Word of God. See, to know the Bible means to know God. And to know God means to know truth. So to answer the question, can I honestly believe anything anymore? Yes. Yes, you can. So let's begin with the scripture passage that we've been in, Ephesians 3, beginning in verse 14. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think, Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Now, I want you to look at verses 17 and 18 specifically. It says, Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should. So I want you to underline these three words, roots, strong, and understand. Each of these words has connections with one another and how we can glorify God with the truth that is available to each of us. Let's begin with the word understand. God has given us infinitely more to be able to understand the knowledge of his word. He's given us the Bible. It is God's word. Now, the study of knowledge is called epistemology, or epistemology, however you want to pronounce it. And the word epistemology um, originates from the Greek word meaning to cause to stand, to cause to stand. Interestingly, our English word true has the same origin as tree, from a word meaning wood or hard. The idea was that wood was a material with which to build a dwelling that could last. And a tree whose roots grow deep into the soil is immovable and stands firm. And likewise does the word stand derive its origin. So you see the relationship between 
stand in truth. In fact, the compound word understand literally means distinguish truth. And that's how we say we understand, meaning we accept or we apprehend that truth. We distinguish that truth. And here's the good news. God wants us to know the truth. He said, seek and you shall find. But in order to have it, we have to first seek for it. And so the first way that we glorify God is when we seek the truth of his word. So point one, God is glorified when we seek the truth of his word. I have four points, and all of your underlines begin with the letter S. The first word is seek. God is glorified when we seek the truth of his word. Let's take another look at the word knowledge as it originates from the word tree. Remember, in our opening passage, I ask you to underline the word roots. We find the same analogy in Psalm 1-3. Let's read Psalm 1, verses 2 and 3 from the New Living Translation. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. We want to be like that tree whose roots are planted along the riverbank, getting its nourishment from the water of that river. As we read in the opening scripture passage, our roots grow into God's love. And it's the same type of thing. But now think of a tree... Think of pine trees. We have lots of pines here in Michigan. But though pine trees grow tall, they have shallow roots. Snow can build up on top, making them well, top heavy. And if there are strong winds, the tree can uproot and cause damage. Such was the case um, a couple years ago when a pine tree, uh, after a storm, fell on a power line down the street from us, rendering our entire neighborhood without electricity. Now, in contrast, Oak trees, unlike pines, oak trees have strong, deep root systems. In fact, what you see on top of an oak tree is almost mirrored underneath the ground. But oak trees have strong, deep root systems that anchor them firmly. And listen what it says again in Ephesians 3.17, that our roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. That's the third word I asked you to underline, strong. See, just like the tree whose roots grow deep, fed by the river in Psalm 1, our roots ought to grow deep down into God's love, which will keep us strong. And this is achieved by what we read in verse 2, by meditating on God's truth day and night. In other words, reading and studying the Bible. Now, to study God's word is a discipline. But in so doing, we glorify God. So point two is God is glorified when we study the truth of his word. Your fill-in is study. In order to really recognize the truth, we have to be in the word. We have to study the word. Otherwise, we can be deceived. Eve was deceived in the garden. We remember the story of Adam and Eve in the garden and how the serpent um, tried to put doubt into Eve's mind and, and asked, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He took a kind of a half-truth and twisted it. And unless you understand what is the center, what is the full truth. It's easy to get deceived one way or another. In music, we tune by a note, A440, and that is 440 cycles per second that produces the tone A above middle C. And most tuning forks are tuned to that A. If you hit a tuning fork and you hear that tone, that's A440. When an orchestra tunes, um, the concertmaster or the first violinist will play that A. Sometimes it's the oboist, but they'll play that A440, and every other instrumentalist will tune off of that note 
so that every note that is tuned from that note in relation will be in tune and the entire orchestra will be in tune. So through one tone, every other, through one note or one string on the violin, all the other strings are made in tune. But also from that one note, all the other instruments in the entire orchestra can also play in tune. And that's the same with us. If we are in tune with God, then our lives should reflect that. And everyone around us, just like all the other instrumentalists in the orchestra, can know that truth and their lives can be affected likewise. Pastor said oftentimes that all of us have influence. It may be greater or lesser than other people, but that doesn't matter. God has given each of us a measure of influence. And what we need to do is we need to use that influence to, to show God's truth in our lives and not to say one thing and do another. Not to say, well, I'm mostly A440. No, we're either A440 or we're not. Now, here's where, here's where it gets um, confusing to people. When they see someone who is a Christian, but they do something that is not Christ-like. In other words, they have A written on them, but it's not really A, it's A-flat. Or they have A, but it's really A-sharp. They got just enough of God to say, hey, I'm A. But really, they're not truly A. They have a form of A, but really deny that power that is the truth of what pure A is. In fact, if you were to play A on the piano and play A sharp at the same time, there would be a dissonance. If you were to play A and A flat at the same time, there would be a dissonance. It wouldn't sound pretty. <laughs> and people know that. I mean, even people that don't have a well-trained musical ear, they'll recognize someone singing flat or sharp. Maybe they don't recognize exactly whether they're just above the pitch or below the pitch, but they'll say they're pitchy or that doesn't sound right to me. I mean, people know. And people know by your lives, if you say you're a Christian, they'll recognize if your life is not consistent with the truth that ought to be in your lives as is expressed in God's word. So don't be A flat or A sharp. Know the truth of pure A440 that God wants us to know. Now, as I said, it's a good thing that we study God's word. It is truth and knowledge. However, if we don't act on that knowledge, then what good is it really? If we know the truth, then we honor God to obey that truth. Listen to what Jesus says in Luke 6, 43 through 49. So why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It is like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the floodwaters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it is well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against that house, it will collapse into a heap of ruins. Stands firm. Sound familiar? See, the truth of the Bible is our foundation. And the Bible likens Jesus as the solid rock, who is our foundation. We need to build upon the rock. If we are going to be able to withstand all of the negativity and doubt that's in our culture, then our roots need to go down deep. They need to be anchored in God's truth. And that truth is our foundation. And when we're not swayed by false teachings and we live our lives in obedience to the law of God, in fact, as Psalm 1 says, the light in that law, well, then number three, God is glorified. How? God is glorified when we stand for the truth of his word. So again, God is glorified when we seek the truth of God's word, when we study the truth of God's word, and now when we stand for the truth of God's word. Remember in Psalm 1, 
Psalm 1, by anchoring our roots deep, we bear fruit. And this brings glory to God. It shows that we are his disciples because we are known by our fruit. Let's go back to Luke 6. Coming a little bit earlier in verse 43, it says, A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes, and grapes are not picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. A couple weeks ago, Pastor taught us God will only entrust his power to people with pure hearts. In his message, Infinite Power, he showed us that God wants to give us that power, but it's the power to do righteousness, but he can only trust it to people with pure hearts. And how do we have that pure heart? Well, first of all, we need to guard our hearts. Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else. And you'll want to listen to that message again a couple Sundays ago, Infinite Power, and, um, and hear more about it. But it is so, so important. Listen to what Blaise Pascal said. We know truth not only by the reason, but also by the heart. We've often heard people don't really care about what you know until they know how much you care. And we need to speak what's in our heart, but our heart has to be pure. Because what we say flows from what's in our heart. When you speak your perspective or viewpoint, people will judge your stance not only by your words and reason, but by your heart and intentions. What does your heart look like? It is from the heart the mouth speaks. So if we are to bear good fruit, we must have pure hearts. And that fruit is what? It's making passionate followers of Christ. Simply put, it's sharing the truth. So my last point, God is glorified when we share the truth of his word. The last villain is share. So we have seek, study, stand, and share. God is glorified when we first initially seek that truth, when we study that truth, when we stand for the truth, and now when we share the truth with others. Not only being known by our good fruit, by our good works, but by sharing that with others so that that fruit multiplies. A tree doesn't produce fruit just to produce fruit. Within that fruit are seeds from which there will be other trees. So a disciple of Christ wants to make other disciples of Christ. They want to duplicate themselves. The truth that they know or that we know ought to be shared with others so that they would know the truth. And guess what? They would share with others and so on and so on and so forth. So Jesus explains this in John chapter 15 when he um, likens himself to the true vine. Beginning in verse 1. I am the true grapevine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they produce even more fruit. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. And listen to this last part. This brings great glory to my Father. This whole series has been about giving glory to God. How do we glorify God? 
And this is what it's about. When we produce much fruit, we are God's true disciples. It's taking the truth of God's word and applying it to our lives so that we are true disciples, known by him, and doing what? Making other disciples. In so doing, brings great glory to God the Father. So that's how God wants us to glorify him, by seeking after the truth, by studying that truth, so that we may stand for the truth, recognize the lies and deceptions, but stand for it and obey it. Live our lives consistent with that truth and sharing that truth with others so that all may know him and be saved by the truth of the gospel of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word, that it is available to us. Lord, there is absolute truth. It is your word, and it is available to us. It is a gift from you to us. Father, may we not keep that truth only to ourselves, but may we share that truth so that others may know you, so that others may know that you love them, that you died for them, that you can forgive them of all of their sins, so that by accepting you, they would enjoy a relationship with you, an eternity with you in heaven. We thank you for all of these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to email us at office at woodland.church. And we are grateful and glad that you've chosen to be with us tonight. God bless you.